When I first started in cybersecurity, a lot of my colleagues were talking about a device called a Raspberry Pi and all of these great things about it. Now, long story short, someone mentioned about the best thing they've ever installed on the Pi called a Pi Hole. Now, hearing the name, I was intrigued. What the heck is a Pi Hole? So I went on Google and researched about it, and this thing looked pretty cool because its purpose is to block DNS ad related requests. I knew I had to install this immediately. So I went out to purchase a Raspberry Pi and it took me so long to find a seller. The reason why I got a Pi is because I thought a Pi hole must be installed on a Raspberry Pi. It does not. In this video, I'll be walking you through on how you can get set up with a Pi hole and start monitoring your DNS request while adding some network protections in your home network. All you really need is a virtual machine that is going to be acting as your DNS server. The great news is that this virtual machine doesn't need to be beefy at all. It just needs to remain online. This can be an old computer that is sitting in the corner that you had forgotten about. I mean, the requirements are four gigs of disk space and 512 megs of RAM, not even a gig. Seriously, incredible. Now, enough of me talking, let's get started. For the setup, I'll be using Ubuntu 22.04 Server Edition. If you don't have that, you can head over to ubuntu.com, go over to products, click on Ubuntu Server, and then click on Download Ubuntu Server. Currently, the version is 24.04, .04, but if we scroll all the way down, we have a previous release of 22.04.4. .04. So you can click on that, and your download should eventually start. Once you have Ubuntu set up, we'll begin updating the repositories and libraries. So I'll type in sudo app-get update and sudo app-get upgrade-y. Hit enter and I'll type in my password. If you don't know how to get set up with Ubuntu, I do have some project videos on my channel that will walk you through on how you can get set up with Ubuntu. You'll know you're good to go once you see this pink screen. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. The next thing to do is set up a static IP for our virtual machine as it will be acting as our DNS server. So if I type in IP space A, it is currently set to 192.168.100.247. And to manually change this to a static IP, I'll type in sudo nano slash etc slash netplan, and then I'll hit tab. And this is the configuration file that you want to edit which is called 00-installer-config.yaml. We can currently see that our network adapter of ENS34 is set to true. Now, before I begin modifying this, I'll go ahead and close this out and type in IP space A again. I want you to take note of the network adapter, which in my case is ENS34. Yours might be a little different. Yours might say ETH0, for example, or maybe ENS20. The important thing to note is your network adapter that has a valid IP address. And again, my case is ENS34. So I'll hit the up arrow key to rerun the sudo nano command. And we see our network adapter here of ENS34. Now again, yours might be different. What I'll do is I'll change this from true to false, and then I'll hit enter, press tab three times. So one, two, three, type in addresses, colon, enter, Tab three times again, one, two, three, dash, space. And now I'll type in the IP that I want. So I'll just statically assign this as 192.168.100.248. And I must add in a subnet, so slash 24, which is the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Go ahead and hit enter. Tab three times, one, two, three, route, colon, Enter 123-2, colon, default, enter 1234, so four tabs, via, and I'll type in my gateway, which is 192.168.100.1. Finally, we'll enter in our name server. So I'll press enter, 123, name servers, colon, enter 1234, addresses, colon, square bracket, and then you can enter in a DNS server that you want to use. In my case, I'll just use Google's DNS, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 Close the square bracket. Now we can save this configuration by holding Control X, press Y for yes, and hit enter. 
And before I make the change, I did want to note that although my configuration is currently set up like this, yours is likely going to be different than mine. You'll need to use either your home network settings or your lab network settings. In other words, make sure your IP address and default route is correct and is on the same network as either your home or lab network. To complete this, I'll type in sudo netplan apply and hit enter. Now you will get a lot of warnings such as permissions for this are too open or even open vSwitch is not running. That's perfectly fine. Once we applied it, we can type in IP space A and now look at our network adapter. Our IP address is 192.168.100.248. We have successfully assigned a static IP to our Ubuntu server. Next, I'll begin by downloading the installer using the wget command. And I'll include this in the description down below. Go ahead and hit enter. Type in my password. And now we get our Pi-hole automated installer wizard. So this says, this installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. So I'll go ahead and hit okay. Important, if you have not already done so, you must ensure that this device has a static IP. Now we did assign a static IP, so we're good to go. And here it says, select an upstream DNS provider. To use your own, select custom. If you want additional security, you can use either Quad9 or even Cloudflare, but I'll go ahead and just select Google. Pi-hole relies on third-party lists in order to block ads. You can use the suggestion below or add your own after the installation. I'll select yes and hit enter. Do you want to install the admin web interface? Yes, I do. A web server is required for this admin web interface. Do you want to install the modules? Yes, I do. Would you like to enable query logging? Well, this one is going to be up to you depending on your disk space, but I'll keep this as yes. And I'll leave the privacy mode as show everything. Once your pie hole is installed, you want to take note of the password and the URL. So in my case, I'll just copy the password. I'll hit enter and our installation is complete. The last thing we need to do is set our host to point to this pie hole as our DNS server. To do that, I'm on another virtual machine that is on the same network as my pie hole. I'll right click the network settings and click on open network and internet settings. Head over to the change adapter options, right click the network adapter and select properties. I'll double click the internet protocol version four. And under the DNS settings, we want to select use the following DNS server addresses. And I'll type in my pie hole address. So it's 192.168.100.248. Hit okay, hit okay. And now we should be able to access our pie hole. So I'll type in 192.168.100.248 slash admin. And we'll type in the password that we copied earlier. And this is our pie hole web interface. Now we do see zero queries blocked, but if we type in youtube.com slash at my defer, we can now head over to our pie hole and refresh. Oh, we don't even need to refresh. Look at that, two queries blocked. We can click on our add list. And this is where you can add in additional block lists if you want to have Pi-hole automatically block DNS requests for you. For example, there are some block lists that can contain websites that are known to host malware. So you can copy that and put it into your Pi-hole to have your Pi-hole automatically block malicious websites for you. Clicking on query log, we can see exactly which domains were blocked and allowed. Overall, Pi-hole is amazing and I highly recommend you try and spin one up for yourself. I don't know about you, but the first time I saw this, I was extremely excited. I mean, the fact that I could block ad-related requests made me so happy. That is it for the video and I hope you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.